Uh, so now we got to talk about seller. You know, we have attorneys on hand, and who is uh, going to be um, Mark Arnowitz, and he's going to concentrate talking about seller and how we can really, you know, how to protect their assets. You know, because of the value is going higher, and making sure that you know they do everything they can right to to protect them. So, Mark, how are you doing today? I'm good, Simon. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, you want to talk about what we can do for sellers? I would love to. So, um, I'm Mark Aronowitz from the law firm of Haran and Aronowitz, and uh, I am happy to talk about sellers because we are in a unique market where there is massive demand by buyers and limited numbers of sellers. And what happens when you have that kind of offsetting market? You have leverage as a seller, massive leverage. Um, and we are seeing sellers use that leverage to their best advantage. Uh, when you have multiple buyers putting in offers, obviously the big difference maker is purchase price, but there is a lot of other um, sort of factors that will impact on how a uh, seller makes a decision. And one of the big ones is in terms of maximizing assets, you have buyers who are providing purchase price offers. And the way historically that these real estate transactions worked is that during the course of the transaction, oftentimes you may have offsets off that purchase price through um, reductions because of inspections and buyers demanding sellers make repairs or through reductions because a buyer goes to get a mortgage and their mortgage appraisal comes in lower than the purchase price value. Historically, there is a negotiation and potentially reduction in purchase price. Um, what we are trying to do from a seller's side right now is have sellers say, we're not gonna to agree to those things. So let's start with the, the big one, which is the appraisal. When a buyer um, is buying a home with a mortgage, their lender will send out an appraiser, as John spoke about earlier today. And oftentimes that appraiser uh, in a market where the values are increasing heavily, the um, appraiser may not have caught up to the current values being as high as they are. So when they issue their appraiser, they, their appraisal report, they'll say that the value is less than the purchase price. And the way this historically works is that when it's less than the purchase price, the understanding is the buyer then can't get a certain loan and the parties may have to renegotiate or the transaction may not proceed. So how are we avoiding this from a seller's side? Well, when the contract is signed, the seller is making the demand that the buyer, uh, what's called waive their appraisal. And what that means is whatever value the appraisal comes in at has no impact on whether the buyer is saying that they can proceed with the transaction and get their mortgage, essentially meaning that they would have to come up with additional cash or down payment money to make up any shortfall in an under appraised value. This part, I mean, that is critical. That is a big change in the benefit of sellers through these transactions. It means right off the bat, they're saying we are not going to reduce purchase price based on a third party valuation of this property. We are only going to base it off the agreement to, between the buyer and the seller. So that's, that's a major, um, that's a major factor that sellers are, are really um, demanding from buyers in these multiple offer situations. Uh, a second thing is when you're dealing with inspections. Historically, when, uh, when a buyer enters into a transaction, they have the right to do their home inspections, their physical inspections, which I know Ernie is going to talk about later. And um, once those inspection reports come back, if there are defects, buyers usually make demands for a seller to repair or provide credits. So what can a seller do to avoid that? Well, in this multiple offer market, a lot of sellers are saying uh, you could do your inspections, but uh, you're understanding up front that they're informational. We're not going to make any repairs. We're not going to provide any credits and you can't back out. So you're buying this house based on the value you see today because there are so many people that want the same house. Um, from that informational stage, there are other kind of uh, gradual reductions in inspection. One would be limiting inspection to major defects. Um, that's pretty common anyway, but these days it's, um, it's become more firm. So what does that mean? It means that unless there's some sort of structural or environmental contaminant that really poses a vast health and safety issue, um, a buyer can't make a request for a repair or a credit. Um, this, 
helps the seller go into this knowing that, okay, unless there's a true disaster with my house that we're unaware of, um, I'm going to be able to not have to spend excess money on my repairs or credits and be able to maintain the same value that we, we've agreed upon from the, inspect, um, from the contract. Um, so those two are, are very big ones, the appraisal and the inspection. If you can limit your exposure on both of those, uh, you're really limiting the ability for a buyer to demand that you reduce your pricing throughout the transaction um, and kind of uh, alleviate that concern that you're going to have buyers do bait and switch on you in the middle of a transaction. Um, Simon, any questions so far on appraisal and inspection before I move no, on? To those, those totally make sense. So for a seller, what about, you know, closing day, right? So some of the seller today want maybe like, hey, you know what, I want to catch this market and be take advantage of it and sell now and then say, hey, you know, I can move into like into the summer months. And what right. do you tell the seller on that part? Okay, you got ahead of me on my next point. So um, because people are trying to take advantage of this crazy seller market and they're like, you know what, I got to get my money now while it's still hot, but I don't have anywhere to go yet. So one thing sellers are demanding, and we're seeing it a lot, and it's um, from an attorney's side, it's not always the most comfortable, but it's, it's truly effective from a seller side, is we agree on a closing date with the understanding that um, after the closing, the seller can remain at the property for a particular period of time under what's called an occupancy agreement. And the benefit to the seller is they get to sell their house at the height of a market while also obtaining extra time at the house to find wherever they want to go. Um, there was some discussion earlier about, are you moving out of state? Are you staying in state? Some people haven't figured that out yet. This gives them an extended period of time to, to make those decisions um, while still getting the full value of their purchase price. So that's become very big. Um, and then beyond that, normally with an occupancy agreement, the idea would be that a seller would pay, let's not call it rent, but let's call it a um, occupancy fee while they're there. A lot of sellers beyond just saying we want the additional time are also saying we also don't want to pay an occupancy fee. So they're even limiting their exposure in that regard. They're being able to stay while also not paying their mortgage because they've now sold their house and also um, not paying the same occupancy fees to a buyer that they may normally be paying. So a lot of ways to use the leverage on, in that front too. Um, and then talking about on the closing day, we're seeing... Um, Normally, and you know, it's pretty common and it's the way the contract reads, a seller has to get all of his stuff out of a property. He has to sell it when it's clean, all of his material possessions are gone. And we're seeing sellers now saying, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna sell you the property. We're gonna take our personal stuff, anything we leave behind, you deal with. And buyers are saying, okay, because when they're one of multiple buyers, that sometimes is the difference maker, which I know there's other people who are gonna talk about how to how to get your multiple offer accepted. But from an attorney standpoint, it's kind of fascinating when we get to this closing day and people are like, okay, I'm leaving you all my junk and I'm leaving. Um, which means that a seller doesn't have to spend money on, you know, junk removal or, or necessarily all the money they would normally have to spend on a mover. So it's a further valuation of how to maintain your assets. And then the last quick point I was going to talk about is more of a um, tax question. So when you sell your property, New Jersey requires every seller to pay what's called a transfer tax. And it's a graduated tax based on the purchase price value of the home. Um, and there's two things I wanna point out. One is if you're above a certain age, if all owners of the property are above 62, you do get a reduction in that transfer tax. So I only mention that so people are aware of it because sometimes we do have um, sellers who come along and aren't aware and they're not being told that they are eligible for this um, reduction. But the other thing I was going to mention is oftentimes during the inspection process, we have negotiations on credits. And one thing you can do at the original contract stage is have an agreement that any transfer tax for a seller will be based on the amount, the net amount they're going to make. So even if there's a credit, we can pass that additional credit transfer tax value back to a buyer. Um, and I've seen that a, a bunch of times recently where um, we're saying, you know what, even if we agree to a credit, we're not going to pay the tax on it, which uh, transfer tax on that credit value, which normally we would. So that is another thing to keep in mind in terms of maximizing your assets as a seller. 
Um, it's a great leverage time to be a seller. You can demand all kinds of things, things where you haven't even seen before or heard of, and people are still saying yes, just because they want the property so bad. And Simon and I have seen some doozies recently, so he knows. It's amazing out there right now, right? I mean, especially with all the multiple offers. And then, of course, the, yeah. later on, we can have you know, another turn and talk about how, how they can protect their buyer as well. Uh, so, Mark, Mark, thank you so much for your time. If someone wants to get in touch with you, have you been the representation? Uh, what's the best contact number for them to reach you? So, I like to give people my cell phone for direct communication. It's 917-494-0217. Um, and I'm available anytime. That's, that's what real estate is, 24-7. So, I tell people, call me whenever. Thank you so much, Mark, for your time. And Mark is a great attorney, and we have a couple of transactions as well. So definitely, he knows how to handle and you know, help you uh, as a seller, and uh, you know, also buy too, and uh, but get you the you know the best advice you can. And um, thank you again.